hit record. Welcome to today's workshop, Strategies for Enhancing Instructor Presence in the Online Classroom. Uh, in today's workshop, we'll be going over some ways that you can maintain presence in your online courses or in the online component of your hybrid courses. Um, something that I don't address um, in this workshop, but we can definitely talk about that um, as well if you have questions about it, is high flex classes and how to keep your online students engaged when you have students in the classroom as well. I'm Amanda Smothers, I'm your presenter today. I'm the Teaching and Learning Coordinator in the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning at NIU. I will have time to take questions at the end of the presentation, presentation. so if you have specific questions, post them to the chat thread um, or raise your hand and I can address them as they come up or you can wait until the end. Um, it's up to you. All right, so let's get to know everyone who's here. In the text chat, just tell us what's your department or division, what's your role at NIU, and what do you hope to get out of this workshop? Great, thanks so far. So hoping for some strategies to continue to improve online courses. Great, we'll definitely have some of those. That's a good point. So making your course more interesting or engaging so that students uh, see that you care, even though it is online. And learning to manipulate Blackboard Collaborate, so we're, which we're using right now. So, all right, great. So in this workshop, um, we're going to discover some practical strategies on how to communicate effectively with your students online, how to show your students that you're present in the online course, and how to support your online student success. So just to um, sort of a baseline of where you're at, how do you approach these things in a face-to-face -face course? So how do you communicate with your students? How do you show your students that you're present? And how do you support your student success in your face-to-face -face courses? And you can post this to the chat if you want. You can unmute yourself, whatever. May I? This is Sheila. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Face-to-face, uh, -face, yeah. you're seeing them. So I usually start off my class, you know, by going over reminders, doing like my little free commercial break with them and so on. So they know that I'm there. I'll talk about things that were submitted before, what's coming up and so on. So they know that I'm there. Even before class, do I can send announcement using Blackboard Collaborate to the entire group, reminding them of um, things that need to be done. So that's one way I can show my presence when I'm doing it face to face. Great, that, thank you. You're welcome. Ari. Sorry, whoops. Coming online there. Um, in, like in face-to-face, -face, I feel like it's kind of organic and you can have a bit of a rapport with the class and kind of signal your engagement and your empathy and get a little bit of a sense of who's responding to what and then kind of adjust course. And I found it really challenging online to get, I, I teach mostly asynchronous classes and I find it really challenging online to kind of ex extend and like showcase that I'm a real person who cares about their 
learning in their experience and that like I'm there for them if they they need a hand in my face to face courses I find students come up and talk to me after class and come to office hours and I have very very little of that online um so that's one of the challenges I'm having as well well, that's a great segue. Um, uh, Fati? Uh, well, actually, it depends on the nature of the online education. If it is a fully synchronous online, so I am having some meetings, uh, synchronous meetings with the students to provide the online uh, support. And if it's a fully asynchronous meeting, I am designing help sessions so some students can show up at least and we can just meet each other. But on the other hand, I am actively engaging in the discussions so they know that I am there and reading their posts and responding, responding to them. Uh, on the other hand, I am sometimes posting the video announcements weekly so they can just see me, my face, and then they can just make sure that I am here to support them. So on the other hand, uh, you know, uh, I have the strategy that has been listed in the syllabus saying that I'll be responding to their email within 24 hours. So whenever they email me, they just make sure that they're going to receive the answer within 24 hours. So those are some sort of strategies that I'm applying so far. Yeah, those are some great strategies. So can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so this is Masi Shokrani. So I'm professor in the medical laboratory sciences program. And actually, I find, uh, you know, online courses, especially if they are uh, synchronous sessions, uh, actually more useful than face to face, because I can engage the students when it's especially when it's synchronous session. Um, more than is uh, when it's face to face because like I, you know I can post uh, a question and then a student can utilize like the chat box like you know some uh, present here today uh, did or uh, you know I can post a question and uh, or breakout groups and so on like using Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. I do not have those features uh, when I teach face to face. Not only that, when you uh, teach a class face to face, uh, students sometimes, many of them, they are shy. They, they don't want to say something because they feel, oh, you know, in front of others while online, again, if it's synchronous session, uh, like today, uh, they can. And so I've, I've found actually synchronous session uh, even I, I should I, I can say superior at least for my classes versus face to face. So uh, that's how I look at it. Hey, thanks for that perspective. Thanks to everybody for your perspectives. And you know I think it it definitely boils down to how you use um, you know your online courses, whether it's synchronous or asynchronous, how you um, interact with students in a face-to-face -face classroom, the subject matter that you're teaching, your your students, you know, your each individual class is going to be different with how students prefer to communicate as well or how comfortable they feel communicating um, in a face-to-face -face versus an online environment. There are some, you know, technology tools that you could use like clickers and, and you know, Poll Everywhere, for example, um, get that kind of um, synchronous chat um, feel in a face-to-face -face class too, but that does, you know, require some some setup beforehand and, and getting students familiar with the technology too. Um, yeah, so great, great perspectives. And I think we already kind of touched on this. How is online teaching differently from face-to-face? -face? Um, you know, if there's anything else to share about, you know, communicating effectively with your students online, showing students that you're present in the online course, supporting your students' online success. We did have some, some comments on this about, you know, making sure that you are active in the discussion boards, um, a great idea of, you know, posting a video of yourself, um, you know, introducing students to yourself even, or just a welcome video for the class, or you could do it weekly with your weekly modules online. Um, you know, just to show students that there's an actual person there. 
behind the screen. Um, so any other thoughts about how online teaching is different in these aspects or in these respects than um, face to face teaching? Um, and you can speak from your personal experience as well. So I'll give you a minute if anyone has anything to add other than what we've already talked about. And if not, move on. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. So I agree with just about everything that everybody said. Um, particularly, um, I know Ari was saying that uh, he felt like he didn't quite have the presence that he did, you know, in a regular classroom. It's a little more difficult to when you're asynchronous. Um, I'm pretty much asynchronous, but I do utilize, and I got a um, recommendation from, I think, Dan Cabrera. I send out a lot of what I feel like are really good on Sunday. Welcome to Module 7. And then I put everything on there. It's, um, you know, the agenda for the week. I even include sometimes videos or my picture or um, things that make that make it a little friendlier the other thing that i do is when responding to their discussions i i have a lot of almost every week they have to do a discussion and so i respond to them specific things they can do with reading and read alouds or my experience as a reading specialist so i bring in i feel like i have some value added things to include um, in just in my responses when I'm grading their discussions. So that's that, that's my what I add, feel like I add to it the the announcements and then these um, I feel like there's substantive comments back to them on their dis weekly discussions. And that's about great. It. Some, those are great strategies. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Uh, one of the things, too, I'm just adding this, is um, I find sometimes students say, well, she didn't tell me that, or, you know, over the years as a reading specialist, I like to have everything in my announcements in writing. Well, no, you had an announcement uh, eight weeks ago on that, and it, it was laid out step by step. I put things step by step so that it's clear for everybody, and I get mostly good feedback with that. She, says exactly what we need to do, but then there's always someone that didn't, that missed it and she didn't tell us. So, so partly I really have these <laughs> explicit announcements. <laughs> Just to remind yeah, you. Yeah, you, right. you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink, right? <laughs> right, right. There's always one in the club. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Messi, did you have um, any other comments? I see that you're... Mike is on? Uh, no, well, I mean, later, not not right now. Oh, great. So I'll just mute everyone just to make sure that we don't have background. All right. So if, and if you, anything comes up as we're going through, just please feel free to raise your hand or post to the chat. Um, all right. So some of this we've already talked about. Um, some of these strategies, but I'll go into a little bit of depth with some of them. So first of all, what is instructor presence? Before we discuss those strategies for enhancing instructor presence online, we have to define what that means. Um, simply, instructor presence means being there in your class, um, which, as was pointed out, in the physical class, face-to-face -face class, you know, that's kind of just a given you're there in the classroom. Um, but in an online learning environment, instructor presence means that your students see you behind the screen as a real person there to help with their learning. So in other words, instructor presence is creating the perception for your students that you are a real person right there with them in the process of learning and that they can approach you for help when they need it. And the set it and forget it mindset is an easy one to fall into when you're teaching online, especially an asynchronous course. It's tempting to just set your course up before the semester begins and essentially sort of forget about it without engaging in the course. 
The problem with that mindset is that it has a detrimental effect on student success and on teaching efficacy. It's important for students to see faculty as engaged and present in their course, and active participation by faculty keeps students learning. Faculty should be evaluating and adjusting learning materials and approaches continually to ensure that students are progressing towards their learning outcomes, and we can't do that if we're not there, uh, if we're not present in the course. So some components of instructor presence include persona, social presence, and instructional presence. Persona is the instructor's personality and teaching style. That's what gives your students the impression of who you are. It helps them feel more connected to you as their instructor. You can communicate this throughout your course, but some easy ways to do this are by, as someone mentioned, including a video of yourself and maybe an instructor intro or a course welcome message or um, module overviews. Social means community building. So in other words, this is how you connect with students and vice versa, how students connect with each other to create that sense of classroom community. Providing opportunities for these connections to happen is important to keeping students engaged in your course and increasing their chances of success. And it also means being responsive to students through timely communication and expecting the same in return. And finally, in presence is essentially your role in facilitating students' learning experiences in the course. So to enhance your presence through instruction, you might want to consider multimodal learning materials that provide information in multiple ways through written communication, video, audio, images. Um, just make sure that a video, audio, and images are, you know, images have alt tags, video has captions, audio has captions as well, or transcripts. Um, you can provide students with a week video of yourself too, explaining what they can expect from the course and assignments and how to navigate that week's module lessons and activities. Well, that leads to our topic of creating and sustaining connections in your online classroom. Some examples of ways to create and sustain connections include developing an introduction discussion forum where students can get to know each other and you make sure that you students introductions respond to them so they know that you want to create those connections with them and also encourage students to this is what I do share photos and videos to create some more opportunities to get to know each other and put faces to names um, the first time that I did this I didn't stipulate that students should have like their face in the photo so I got some students with like their faces kind of covered up or you know from a distance where I couldn't see them I was like from then on I Okay, can you please put have a have a picture of your face if if you feel comfortable doing so, so that I can kind of put a face to a name and get to know you a little bit better. Um, and then require peer responses in that introduction form, so that students need to read about each other and engage each other in conversation when the course starts. Um, and another way to create and sustain connections in an online course is to hold at least one synchronous session in the first week. So you can interact with students, let them connect with you and each other. Um, within that synchronous session, encourage students to share video and or audio. Um, you know, maybe not require it because of privacy or equity concerns, but encourage it. Um, and also consider doing an icebreaker activity to make everyone feel more comfortable. Um, encourage students to come up with their own ways of building a sense of community. For example, my students have come up with um, creating a chat on social media so that they could talk to each other outside of the class environment in a way that you know I don't have access to so you know if they need to commiserate about the class or ask for for help from each other or just you know create those social connections that they might have created you know before or after class if they were in a face-to-face -face classroom um, then they're able to do that and they've they've all chosen different social media platforms that worked for them so some of them chose um, Instagram, some of them chose Discord. Um, so I left it up to them how they wanted to do that, but I gave them the opportunity during that first synchronous session to exchange information with each other so that they could all connect with each other. And then consider using also a welcome assignment or a survey to ask students how you can best serve them. What are their needs? What are their unique challenges? What are their goals? How can you help them figure out ways to be successful in light of that context? Um, 
And then one way to engage students with the course is to connect course materials to students' interests. Use those opportunities that you created to get to know your students and then leverage that information into connecting students' interests to your learning materials, your learning activities, your assessments, whenever it's possible and practical to do so. You can also share your interests with students so that they can get to know you better. And another way to engage students is to show them how course materials are relevant to their academic lives. What common college expectations do you have in your course that students will be expected to follow across their college careers, for example? Or what are some skills and knowledge that will transfer to their other college courses from your course? How could you help students make their own connections between your course and their other college coursework as well? And then also <laughs> emphasize the relevance of your course to students for future professional lives. Um, and that's to engage them with the learning in your course, help them create those connections to think about how what learning could apply to their future professional goals. So that goes back to those transferable skills that you might have identified for other college coursework too. And another way to create connections to future professions is by connecting course policies to professional expectations. Um, just be sure that those expectations do accurately reflect the workplace and keep in mind that students are still in college, which is a learning and not a professional environment yet. So um, make those learning experiences teachable moments. In addition to creating connections within your course, communicate with your students frequently and in multiple ways to maintain that presence in your course. And we heard about, you know, creating these course announcements every week, giving them an overview of the course, um, or creating a course, you know, a video at the beginning of the week as well. You know, we could combine those and create a video and create a course announcement so that students receive that information in multiple ways. Um, in these announcements, you can remind students of upcoming deadlines in a weekly announcement or in follow-up announcements, you could create an announcement and send an email when grades are posted and provide any additional instructions for accessing those feedback comments or active rubric if you've used one of those in Blackboard. You could send reminders about your virtual office hours, including how to make an appointment or how to get to the virtual office space. I, I recommend doing that. Um, we often tell students in the first week, okay, these are our office hours, it's on the syllabus. Are they going back to the syllabus necessarily? When they're stressed out um, about an assignment and they need the office hours, are they gonna be able to find that information quickly and easily? So if we keep sort of reiterating when our office hours are, how to make an appointment if we require appointments or how to get to the virtual office space, they're more likely to get there. And also you require that they um, come to your virtual office space for you know, a quick introduction um, within the first couple of weeks of class so that they've been there once before. And I also recommend for face-to-face -face classes as well, have them come to your physical class, uh, office space too. Um, so that they've been there before and more likely to come there when they need it. Um, you can also post weekly module introductions and overviews um, and include connections to the previous module. So transition between those modules. How does what they're learning this week or in this unit connect to what they learned previously? Um, you can also think about posting an occasional midweek motivation message or video. Um, do those sparingly probably if you're going to be doing weekly announcements um, or weekly emails. Um, just because they get a lot of communication. If they're taking a lot of classes online, the primary mode of communication is probably going to be email and they're probably going to be getting a lot of emails. Um, so make it helpful other than um, too much where it might glaze over those communications. So be careful of that overkill. If you're posting too much, students might start to ignore a little bit um, because especially as they get busy as the semester goes on. Um, in addition to posting announcements, you can use the messages tool on Blackboard to send students in your open classes messages within the course. You can have that message also sent to their email so that they're more likely to see it. You can choose whether they can respond to that message within the messages feature in Blackboard. Um, so there are some options there. 
another important com component to communicating with students is providing timely feedback. And that's for both formative and summative assessments. For formative assessments and learning activities, timely feedback will help students learn and grow ahead of that summative assessment that will comprise that substantial percentage of their course grade likely. Um, so students need to receive feedback on those formative activities in order for them to be meaningful and useful. For summative assessments, students need timely feedback so that they understand their grade and how it was calculated and they also need your comments to be able to learn and improve ahead of whatever the next unit is or the next module or the next assessment. Um, generally, feedback on any assignment should be provided in a time frame that gives students ample time to address those concerns and to ask questions. Um, a good rule of thumb that I try to stick to, you know, whether I'm successful or not um, <laughs> is another question, but is no more than one week after the due date. Um, for assignments that were submitted at the time. Um, so I try to stick within that one week, um, two weeks max. Um, and if you have an accelerated course that's only, you know, eight weeks long, then that's going to shorten um, that time frame as well because everything's shortened. So another way to maintain presence in your course, as was um, brought up by you all, was by recording those module overviews and videos that include you on video, um, or at least audio, um, to show students that you're communicating with them to make it seem more personal. Um, those videos are gonna help students connect with you in the course, demonstrate to students that you're personally invested in their learning. Um, it's hard to do, but if you can record them anew every semester, um, you can, mention specific things about that course, things that you noticed that they, maybe they were having trouble with or great points that um, students brought up in the last week's discussion boards so that you can show them that you really are engaged with their class um, because they will notice things. Um, they'll notice if you're mentioning things, you know, mention your 2020 or, or 2021 and it's 2022 and then they know that this video wasn't just recorded. So any way that you can, and it, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be every week, but any way you can kind of personalize it to that course um, will really enhance that effect. Another best practice in communicating with students is just making sure that you respond to students' communication in a timely fashion. Um, that doesn't mean you have to be on call 24-7. In fact, don't be. <laughs> it does mean that you respond to all students' communications and that you do so within a reasonable time frame. 24 to 48 hours is a reasonable amount of time, I think, to expect a response. Um, I tell my students within 36 hours, so that gives me a little bit of extra time beyond that 24, but I know it's not going to be generally I, I respond, you know, well in advance of that 48 hours. So I've kind of split the middle there. Um, make sure that whatever your time frame for responding, you communicate that clearly and frequently. I have an um, automatic reply on emails that details the information that I want my students to have in their email to me. So please include your full name and include your class number and sections so that I know exactly where to look for information if you're asking about, you know, an assignment or anything like that. Um, but also it's stating when they can expect a response from me in that, that automatic response um, to their emails. So um, that's one way that I do it. You can also do it just, you know, by mentioning it to them in your synchronous class session. Um, also consider holding regular virtual office hours so that students can meet with you. And some of you mentioned that you do this. Um, can meet with you when I'm using web conferencing tools. You can use Teams, Collaborate, Zoom, whatever works for you. Um, if you're interested in virtual office hours, um, I did deliver a virtual office hours workshop. Um, I'm not sure when the last time is that we delivered it, but if you go to our um, YouTube page, our CIDL YouTube page, we should have a recording of that. And that kind of gives a little bit more detail of the different options available if you want to kind of get a little fancy with your virtual office hours. Um, so you can go go on there and, and look at that for the different options um, for not only platforms for virtual office hours, but also um, for ways to structure your virtual office hours too. 
Um, also, contact details, make sure that you communicate the best way for students to contact you, whether that's by email, by phone, Blackboard messages, some other method. Um, include that information in both the About Your Instructor section of your course, as well as in their syllabus and your course announcements to ensure that students find that information when they need it. Um, and if you're holding Google office hours, list those days and times of your office hours, which ones are maybe drop in, which ones might require appointments, how to set up an appointment, how to connect with you, or how to find that virtual office space. And repeat that information, as I mentioned, regularly, um, target announcements or messages to individual struggling students as well to encourage them um, to contact you. Also include your expectations for communication somewhere in your course. Um, those expectations should include what your students can expect from you, as well as what you expect from your students. If you think it's necessary, you could give them an example email template to use when they email you. Um, I've done that uh, in my syllabus. That could include any information you want them to include in your messages to you, like their course and section number, first and last name, um, any email structure and content you want them to include to practice professionalism and to assist you in helping them. Um, so I've done that to my class. For my class, I put it in the syllabus, but we know that not all of our students read the whole syllabus or remember what's in there. So I've also reiterated that in my course announcements, just as a reminder of the information that they need to include in their emails to me, but also the, what they should include in their emails to their other professors too. Um, and then also I include that information in my auto reply um, for my email too, so that they can be sure to see that information. Um, strategy is to use media particularly with you in it whenever it's appropriate in your course. You don't have to have a lot of technology to do this. You can just use your cell phone. Um, but having personalized media is a way to humanize and personalize your course, and it can be especially useful um, for those of us who might be teaching courses that someone else may have designed and built. So we don't always design or, or build our own online courses, but we're kind of given the course and we need to teach it and find a way to put our own stamp on that course and show our students that we're engaged with them in the learning material. So this is one way to do that, one enhancement to add to your, your online course, um, particularly if you haven't developed it yourself. This is a way that you can add your own, your own spin, your own personality, and your own um, engagement with your students. Online courses happen everywhere. Um, that's one of the, the great things about teaching online courses. It's not just you isolated with your computer necessarily. So don't be afraid to show your students your environment. Um, encourage them to show you theirs if they're comfortable doing so. Um, so if you're in the country, you know, you could film one of your videos with the cornfields behind you. If you live in the suburbs, you could film a video in your backyard garden. If you live in the city, you could record a video with your city view in the background. Um, and however you can personalize your course, go ahead and do it as long as it's appropriate and professional avoid videos with your head in the background. Um, I've had remind students who've recorded themselves of that. Uh, discussion forums and class conversations are another uh, couple of ways to engage with students. Um, and some of you are doing this. Um, so discussions are a great way to keep students engaged in the course and with each other. Um, we can do that through, you know, our chat feature or microphones in our synchronous courses. Um, we also have um, a tool available that you may have heard of called Yellow Dig, which gamifies just the online asynchronous discussions and it moves away from that typical one post, two to three responses per week, kind of standard requirements for the Blackboard discussion boards. Um, students receive points for different activities in the discussion forum in Yellow Dig. They have the freedom to discuss whatever is applicable to that week's learning materials on to each other meaningfully. Um, and then you can also reward students with particularly good discussion posts by responding to them or reacting to their posts, which gives them extra points for that week's yellow, week's yellow uh, grade. Um, also a feature called class conversations, um, and you can enable these on different components of your course. If you're using, if you um, have Blackboard UltraView courses, um, where students can chat with each other about an assignment. Um, and you can see all of these class conversations as well. 
So that's another way to allow students to connect with each other and to collaborate. So here is the class conversations. Um, so this is a document <clears throat> and you click the um, settings and allow class conversations. Um, this will give you a chance and your students a chance to respond to students' questions about particular learning materials, activities, or assessments. Um, you can have conversations about a lesson or an assignment, for example, and then the entire class can see that conversation when they go into that item. And then that's also the benefit of that is that it's tied to that item, the question about that item. Um, and any student can see that. So if they have the same question, then it's, it's already answered for them when they go there. Um, some rules um, for you participating in discussion boards or conversations would be to chime in with some comments every week to show your students that you're engaged. Also to model for students the types of responses that they should be posting, but find that right balance of your participation in the discussion boards. Um, you don't want to post too much or students may rely on you to carry the conversation and you might be taking that ability for students to drive the conversation and create those connections with each other. Um, so just try to find that find that um, middle ground that balance there. So next we'll go over a few ways that you can support students and their success in your online course. Um, but I'll pause here in case anyone has any questions before we proceed. All right, if you think anything, you can always raise your hand or post it to the chat and I will address it as it comes up. So as I mentioned previously, you could conduct a survey to find out what students already know about the subject that you're teaching so that they, you know that their, their level of prior knowledge, but you can also ask them what they're trying to balance in their lives, what factors or challenges might impact their success in the course. Um, you could ask them what technology they're using to take your online course. Um, and that might come in handy if they have technical difficulties later on, then you don't have to waste time going back and forth. Well, what browser are you using? What device are you using? Um, the more information that you have about student circumstances early in the semester, the better equipped you're going to be to help those students succeed. Um, and it would be very useful to know, for example, if your student is taking your online course entirely from their smartphone. Um, so, you know, if they don't have access to a computer, you know, you can maybe look resources for them for that as well. If it's not going to be feasible for them to take the course and be successful taking the course on the device that they had planned to. Um, again, holding virtual office hours, I'll go into that uh, um, again here, but it's a great way to connect with your students to show them that you care about their success in your course. Um, Ideally, office hours should be every week on the same days at the same times. You can require students to make appointments either through something as simple as a shared document with your office hour schedule, or you could use something more sophisticated like bookings through O365, um, which takes a little bit to, to set it up ahead of time, but it's really nice, um, a nice interface. You can also have a certain amount of office hours time set aside for drop-ins. So that students with any last minute questions can come to your virtual office uh, for assistance. And whichever platform you use for your virtual office, whether it's Collaborate or Teams or Zoom or something else, make sure to remind students again often how to make an appointment, what your office hours are, where to find it. And you might also, as I, I mentioned previously, consider requiring students to, to make that brief five minute office hours appointment in that first couple of weeks of class so that they can practice the process, know how to navigate it, and find out when they actually need help later in the semester. Babette? Babette, do you have a question? Um, you'll need to turn your mic on. Yes. Yes. I'm wondering if you have experience with the, in the discussion board, the learner mm -hmm. support 
and that's what I do, but that's not necessarily mm -hmm. personal because other people can see the questions, but sometimes I find right. that useful. And so I do remind the students, but have you found that they use it frequently? They don't really um, see so I do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, I think it's just finding whatever your students yeah. are going to use. So even if one student uses it, then I think it's, you know, a useful tool. Um, right. So it's, I think, just providing multiple ways for them to receive assistance okay. um, and making sure that they're aware of those as well. Okay. Um, you know, right. making them aware of them at the beginning of the semester, but also kind of reminding them of those things throughout the semester at various points, um, just so that, you know, hey, in case you forgot, we have this this feature yes. that will okay. be useful we'll for you. I'll remind them. <laughs> Yeah, because so you, they get so much information at the beginning of the semester. Um, you know, they're taking four or five classes. They're getting four to five classes worth of syllabi, syllabi you know, shoved into their brains. So, you know, it, yeah. it helps to just remind that. You know, and some of them are working yeah, so, too on top of that. So, right, exactly. Yeah. So they've got a lot going on too. So it's not just you know, oh, they're not reading the syllabus. Maybe they did read it and they just don't remember because so much information came away. Um, so those re those reminders throughout are really helpful. Thanks for that Thank question. You. You're welcome. So also another way that you can help uh, is to provide a page in your course with frequently asked questions um, and then require students to check that document first before they contact you with general questions about, for example, course policies and procedures. Um, I've done that. You could also create a traditional discussion board in Blackboard for questions and answers. Um, and I always give my students a little bit of extra credit for answering their classmates' questions correctly. And it has to be correct answers. Um, but that gives them an, the incentive to, to check the Q&A form regularly or forum regularly. Um, so they're actually looking there uh, and seeing their classmates' questions. Um, and make sure that you, if you have a Q&A forum, um, discussion forum that you also check it regularly so you can make sure you you see students questions dispel any misconceptions if a student gives another student wrong information um, but maintaining that presence in that discussion board is going to show students too that you're engaged in the course and it's it's going to ha help with that establishing of your continual presence online Another way to support student success and to maintain your presence is to provide students with information about campus services and resources. Uh, consider having a section of your course dedicated to sharing these resources. I think that they are shared, um, but sometimes faculty members don't know what they are and they might delete them or hide them. Um, be proactive to pointing students to specific resources throughout the semester as needed too. Um, if there's an essay due in a few weeks, you might want to highlight the writing center. Uh, if there's a test coming up, rem remind students about the DRC and to seek out accommodations if they need them. Um, you can also target resources to specific students. Uh, if a student mentions to you that they're having problems with someone on campus, for example, you can link them up with the ombudsperson. Um, if the students are having technical issues, you can point them to the Department of IT. If they approach you because of their, um, their dead name, uh, your trans student's dead name is on the course roster. Give them the information that they need to change their name and pronouns so that doesn't happen again. Um, and also consider whether you have discipline specific resources that might be useful to students. So within your discipline, you know, do, it, does your department have specific resources um, as well specific to your students? Um, whatever the resource is, make sure that you are pointing them out. Um, specific relevant resources regularly to students as they might need them um, and that will also show students that you're present and that you're invested in their success and well-being. Uh, so this is just from a study um, that identified specific factors in helping maximize student success and satisfaction in an online course or program. So they said that faculty are visible in the discussions and respond to each student um, you don't need to respond to each student every single week in every single discussion, but as long as, you know, each one of your students gets a response from you um, at various points throughout the semester, that would be great. 
Um, second, feedback and amendment should be given quickly after the due date, as I mentioned. Faculty challenge students thinking and comments in class discussions. Um, so that's part of being engaged in the online discussion is, is challenging their thinking, challenging their comments um, in constructive ways that get them to be more critical thinkers. Um, Faculty provide individual feedback and specific personalized comments. Faculty share personal experiences and examples when appropriate to do so. Faculty reflect on the literature, or at least share a relevant citation from which students can gain deeper insights. And faculty provide weekly announcements on what will be covered for the week and highlight the transition from the previous week. So just as a summary, um, communicate with students often, provide timely feedback to students, um, I use rubrics, um, but I also provide individualized feedback so that they know that I'm, you know, really reading their work um, and giving them some specific comments. Support your online students, use those campus resources, reach out to individual students who might need um, specific resources and point them in the, the direction. Um, for face-to-face -face classes, I would say, you know, walk them over to, to the building, but for online, you know, you can point them out. Um, give them directions if they you know, need to go to, to a specific building or give them the contact information for that campus resource. Um, and then manage your workload as well. Remember to take care of yourself too. You don't have to be on all the time. All right, so I wanted to leave the last few minutes for any questions or comments or anything that you all want to talk about. So do you have any questions on topics covered by the workshop today? Um, if you have top ideas for future workshops, we're happy to listen to those as well. Um, but any comments that you have too, or anything else that you would like to share about your own classes or anything that you learned today that you think will help um, your students and help engage with your students in your online class. And you can just unmute yourself um, or post to the chat. Um, no need to raise your hand. Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What I would like to say is um, th there are so many features actually available uh, online in uh, Blackboard Collaborate Ultra that the faculty, including even me, previously, are not aware of, and I was, you know, like. And you know, there could be even, and I think there are certain workshops like the one I said at the beginning of the hour, like creating, um, uh, you know, breakout rooms, uh, mm -hmm. you know, or uh, let's say polling, or like mm -hmm. what you, even, you know, a host of, you know, different ways that engages the student when you are teaching um, synchronously. And again, uh, it depends on the nature of the course and the class, because, you know, if you are teaching, let's say, like I teach a research course, which is more asynchronous. Uh, however, I have also, um, you know, every month synchronous sessions as well. So the students, uh, you know, can participate, ask questions or so. But the other courses I teach online are they are synchronous session sessions, and mm -hmm. I have so many features available online, specifically Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, which I uh, do not have or would not have had had I taught that course face to face. And I think mm -hmm. um, my suggestion is to have. Uh, uh, maybe a workshop uh, by the, you know, NIU Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning and uh, mm -hmm. kind of show in general what are all these features available. Some of them I just listed yeah. a minute ago. And I think if the faculty are aware uh, of, oh, these are so, so many features available that, that can enhance my teaching techniques my delivery of the content, especially if you're teaching rigorous courses, and mm -hmm. also at the same time, increasing uh, student engagement. Because frankly, like I said, um, students, not all, but many of them are shy or hesitant to participate in 
in the uh, when you teach face to face. However, mm -hmm. that's uh, eliminated to to certain degree when when it's online. And uh, you know, especially synchronous sessions. And so these are some of uh, you know features uh, that I think could be you know um, demonstrated to to faculty um, in the future. Yeah, and we do have a couple of workshops coming up, uh, particularly on Blackboard Collaborate. Um, let me just share my screen for you. So um, if you go to our Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning website, which you, I'm sure you've been to, um, and then you click on programs and upcoming programs, um, you can scroll down and go to Blackboard programs. And we have a Blackboard Collaborate. So if you're not super familiar with Blackboard Collaborate, um, we have Blackboard Collaborate Basics, which is actually this Thursday. Um, and it goes over the Collaborate interface tools that support engaging in the virtual classroom sessions. Um, and this session is actually led by Blackboard staff. So it, it's um, sponsored, we're sponsoring it on our website, um, but Blackboard staff will be going over the, the Collaborate basics there. Um, and then we have a beyond the, the basics one as well. So if you want to get into more of the features like the camera polling and, and other features that are on Blackboard Collaborate, we have that coming up next Tuesday um, at 10 a.m. So those are just a couple. Um, and then we've also got some other workshops there. Um, we have online teaching programs. So if you're teaching mostly online courses, but we also have faculty staff programs that have more um, general teaching. Um, developing self-directed learners is one of them. Lockdown browser, uh, creating a sense of belonging in your online class is one that's coming up next week too. Integrating civic learning, which is a new workshop that I'll be delivering next week too. So I definitely encourage you to explore our upcoming programs for anything that might be of interest to you and registering for that. Uh, right. Sure. And I, I would like to say actually one, one more, and that is uh, besides, yeah. you know, my, my didactic courses, uh, I have also laboratory component on my course. And uh, of course, which, you know, because it's lab, it's, it's generally, it meets face to face in the lab. However, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, I utilize like Cultura uh, to record. Mm -hmm. uh, so this way students can in advance see the procedures that I will demonstrate to them in the lab. And also yeah. discuss, you know, and, and so again, we get back to, you know, and of course there are workshops and also I think the staff at um, you know, you Center for Innovative Teaching and uh, Learning has been so kind to me that every time I have questions, I email them and I meet with them face to face. As a matter of fact, I did last week, you know, I had some question for recording videos and, you know, what, mm -hmm. one of your colleagues spent almost an hour with me. And so the, what I'm trying to say is there are lots of um, possibilities, features and so on available. Uh, online is just to know them and utilize them and then you see it would really make a huge difference. Yes, thank and thank you for, for mentioning that. Yeah, if, if anyone has questions about, you know, any feature, teaching, instructional technology, Blackboard, um, Kaltura, you know, anything like that, please do feel free to reach out to the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning. We're always here to help. Um, and we usually get back to you practically, um, either with answer questions or, um, you know, setting up, maybe if it's a more complex question, setting up a consultation with you um, to talk about that, either virtually or face-to-face. -face. Um, great. So any other, with the last couple of um, minutes here, any other final comments that anyone has or questions? Yeah, thanks so much, you know. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you so much for joining me today to talk about um, how to 
enhance our instructor presence in our online courses. Again, my, my name is Amanda Smothers. I'm the Teaching and Learning Coordinator in the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning at Northern Illinois University. Feel free to contact me or just our center in general if you have any questions about instructional technology or just teaching. And have a great rest of your week. You will, you will expect um, or should expect a follow-up email from me if you are present today with some resources um, and just kind of wrapping up our discussion today. So have a great week, everyone. Enjoy the warm weather if you're in North